Esther chapter 4, verses 13 to 16. Then Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, Do not think to yourself that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go, gather all the Jews to be found in Susa, and hold a fast on my behalf, and do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my young women will also fast as you do. Then I will go to the king, though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. Welcome to the Neighborhood Church Revive Podcast. We are so glad that you're joining us today as we unpack big ideas about God's Word together. My name is Sean Thomas. I'm an associate campus pastor here at Neighborhood Church, and we believe that God's Word is relevant and helpful even for today, which is why we take the time to unpack what it says, have conversations with each other, uh, interact with you guys listening in our audience, and we love what we do here. Today, I'm being joined by Pastor Justin McKelderly. Hey, how are you, Sean? <laughs> good, good. And that's it. <laughs> so it's just I'm, 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 I'm starting to join. I, I'm a little slow today. Yeah, no, no, that's all right. We, we typically record these early, and, and I'm, man, rolling out of bed. My got bedhead going on, and Justin's <laughs> doing his thing. But it's just the two of us. Um, and Justin, why is it just the two of us? Well, this week's question was, where is God in the midst of suffering? And we just didn't think it appropriate since, I think... Pretty much most of the staff went to Hawaii, so I figured we're the yeah. only two qualified, right? To, to, <laughs> to, to say we actually uh, we're suffering. suffering yeah, as any, yeah, I think Mike Mike's joke in service yesterday was the biggest, most suffering he had to do was deciding whether to go to the beach or the pool. So I'm like, okay, man, it's a good thing I took it. Then, nothing so. like first world problems. <laughs> as I say. So, like Justin said, uh, it, big idea uh, for this past week was suffering. As you guys listening to this podcast know, we're going through our planted series and asking just a number of big questions. Who is God? What's a disciple? And for this week, and I even mentioned it uh, in my message, it's probably one of the most common whenever you're having a theological debate or conversation or philosophical, 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 philosophical is the word. I'm suffering now as I'm trying to talk because it's so early. A philosophical conversation, always you're going to come to the point of why does God allow evil or bad thing. Why do bad things happen to good people? Why is there evil? And um, yeah, we definitely want to spend time with that just in a general sense, but in a really specific sense also, because Justin, brilliant. I love how you chose Esther to unpack this question because it's such a fascinating story in the Old Testament um, for a number of different reasons. And we'll Go ahead and unpack him here. Well, I think uh, I didn't deal so much with why of suffering, but more where is God in the midst of suffering. So assuming that God is, is, um, but why is he absent? And um, and I, the reason I picked Esther is I think you have um, obviously God's people are going to suffer as the story un, un, unpacks, but. Yeah. Um, but the fact that God is not mentioned in Esther, I think, is sometimes how we feel when we're suffering. Like, yeah. you know, that's the where is God when I'm suffering. So the yeah. fact that I feel like he's absent, Esther, by the letter of actual text, he's absent, right? Yeah. But yeah. but as the story unfolds and as you see it work out, he's clearly not absent. He's clearly working yeah. in ways that we just don't see that seem ordinary, but they're not at all when it all comes together. So so that was kind of the, the angle that we... The reason why I said, "Hey, let's let's do this one for suffering." Yeah. It's a Joe and Job. Uh, we'll look to Job this coming week on who you know about the fact that we have an enemy. Yeah. But uh, Job's the easy one to go on suffering, and it makes sense. Uh, yeah. But we yeah. talked through it's Job, expensive. you know, when COVID hit, and yeah. so uh, that, that's so I wanted of, to mix it up a little too. <laughs> that's good. Well, it's kind of funny because I was thinking about that, and 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 Job is kind of that series is people still talk about it actually to this okay. day. It's kind of like a classic series. A couple okay. of years ago, we did uh -huh. Job, and people are still like, yeah, because it was weeks like it was a long time that you guys taught through that yeah i think we did six or seven weeks something like yeah. that yeah no so. that's that's i mean it deservedly so i mean yeah. it's many many chapters yeah um yeah i i totally picked up on that too of um 
so I started kind of out with a kind of with a statement of God is good. You know, that's how I started uh, the message. So Justin preached at Cypress Campus. I was at Los Al. Uh, definitely encourage those of you guys watching or, or listening to the podcast, check out the YouTube broadcast. We have them on our YouTube channels. Um, and I started the message by saying God is good. And I do that specifically and intentionally because sometimes even when I'm, um, I have uh, uh, some good close Christian friends who, you know, believe in the Lord, you know, and are solid, but um, I'm thinking of one friend in particular uh, who has autoimmune issues, um, mm-hmm. is uh, deals with pain frequently, and sometimes I'll have conversations, where is God? Why is this happening? Mm-hmm. I don't feel God. How can he let this happen? Um and you mentioned uh, before we started recording, Justin, you, there's uh, in Psalms, it talks about the Lord is near to the brokenhearted. Yeah. Um, he's with us. He is present. And and that almost juxtaposition of how I feel mm-hmm. and what is reality. Yeah. And, and I think that's beautifully, you explained it beautifully, that in the book of Esther, he's absent like we feel sometimes, but our feelings don't determine reality. Mm-hmm. And because right. we see... Just like you said, and it was really interesting, even in um, like uh, uh, and we'll get into the characters and the story and everything in a moment. But um, uh, you guys probably know the story. The Jews, like all the Jews in Persia are going to be killed. And the way they determined that was even by casting lots and mm-hmm. determining, you know, games of chance, yeah. you know. And yeah. we see a lot in the Old Testament, you know, games of chance, you know, 21st century. You know, we think of Las Vegas gambling, right. you know, and everything like that. But back then in that culture, games of chance were there was an invocation in a sense of a higher power or something leading, you know, and so even with the Jews being scheduled for extermination, almost a year's time, you know, I mean, it wasn't like tomorrow, you know, even in things how that played out, these games of chance were kind of bending to... I didn't even think of that until you started saying that and like, oh yeah, that set the date and yeah, that thought didn't cross my mind, but yeah, that's Yeah, like really interesting. Yeah, I mean, just how, how involved... God was in the story. Um, and so, J- Justin, do you mind just, we can unpack maybe a little bit. For you listening at home, we'll do a little reader's theater okay. <laughs> of, of <laughs> Esther, because it's fascinating. We don't yeah. have a ton of time, but yeah. um, we got, I thought it was fascinating. Uh, whenever the Old Testament directly um, uh, uh, corresponds with like history that I learned in school, mm-hmm. you know, because I'm like, because a lot of times the Old Testament, it's like it, it very kind of um, granular or esoteric, you know, with these names and these mm-hmm. people groups. Yeah. But here it's like, oh, Oh, Xerxes, right. like like Persian Empire, you yeah, know, like yeah. this is something that I I, w- I didn't mention this and it's on Sunday, but if you've ever seen the movie Three Hundred, uh-huh. Xerxes is depicted in okay. that movie. I was thinking that, but I wasn't sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, okay. I kind of I was like, is that right? Because I was trying yeah. to think, and and obviously that movie it's. Rated R, you know, yeah. I mean, like, d- awesome action scenes, but definitely, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Yeah, yeah, it's not family viewing. Yeah, not yeah. family viewing, but probably uh, that, like, Xerxes, just doing brief history, you know, uh, decadent, you mm-hmm. know, probably um, super uh, lascivious, overly sexual in weird ways, mm-hmm. you know, and so this is part of what Esther is coming into, you know, yeah. not glamorous. Yeah, 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 it's definitely... I. I and, and it didn't, you know, there was such a huge chunk that I really flowed with the story. And so I probably didn't get as granular in my study as I should have. But one of the things that popped out in one of the resources I was reading is that um, a lot of this, a lot of it at the at the early part of the story is is passive on Esther's part. It's, mm. She is brought. Yeah. It happened that, you know, it's not active. So, so I don't get the impression. They went searching for the beautiful women around the kingdom. Yeah. This wasn't like American Idol, Cinderella. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a thing where you are going in and you're going to, to have a night with the king. You can imagine yeah. what that is. Yeah. And then you're done. If you like living in luxury, you'll be in the harem, maybe never to be seen again. But you, yeah. if you value the family, you aren't having a family. Yeah. If you you want, if you like living in a palace with a bunch of other women, that's what you'll get, and that's it. You know, so yeah, it, that's it was life. A, yeah. It's a pretty tragic, um, a pretty gross story in terms of 
what's leading up to this. And, and it, that, you know, just kind of shows all the more kind of God's judo in things of using something that's, that's pretty, pretty wicked, pretty yeah. gross. Um, yeah. And he turns that into something that he's going to use to save his people. So, yeah. yeah. And, and I think that's, yeah, <laughs> God's judo. <laughs> that is really super appropriate. Cause right. There's art martial art forms that, you know, like we think of like, Oh, karate, I'm attacking you. But there's yeah. a lot of martial arts. That's like, no, I'm using your body weight to redistribute and redirect. Right. Yeah. And I think that's totally beautiful. I love that. Um, it's, it, it's the famous quote in Genesis, um, and Joseph's story, yeah. you know, like yeah. what his brothers intended for evil, God used for good. Um, and we see that all over. So yeah. Esther becomes queen, if you will, but mm-hmm. I think Justin totally right on more appropriate. He, she's a part of the harem. Mm-hmm. Um, and so she's in the King's court. Um, and Mordecai who, uh, raised her as a daughter, he's like an older cousin um, uh, uh, kind of relationship, but basically a, da- a father-daughter figure because she uh, her parents had died. She's in the court, and now we get Haman. Mm-hmm. Can you tell us about Haman? Yeah, Haman is... Uh, I, I, since we had all these strange names that you know, that if people hadn't read Esther before, so I, it was King Xerxes, Queen Esther, Uncle Mordecai, and Wicked Haman. Oh, nice. You know, it, was, it was who I referred them, just so they had some adjectives to go with them. And so, oh, that's yeah, good. yeah, Haman was um, such a, um, yeah, wicked is the best word, and and yeah. and powerful, and and petty, because um, he's a guy who was very high in command, maybe second in command to Xerxes, yeah. and he has the world at his feet, yeah. and yet there's one guy who won't give him the honor do him yeah. and he can't stand it. And yeah. so um so he decides and I imagine when you're that high up, you could probably just make him disappear. Maybe I've seen too many mafia movies. I don't know. But it seems like you could <laughs> just make, make a guy disappear. <laughs> yeah. But but uh, um but I think um that wouldn't be good enough for Haman because he's so over the top. And so he's like, I'm not just going to kill him. I'm going to kill him and everyone like him. And I'm going to take all the Jews out. And so, um, so yeah, he's, he's an awful character. Um, and, uh, but it's his, his comeuppance is, is brutal Perfect as it gets, <laughs> yeah, you yeah. know, like, yeah. So, I mean, I don't know how far you want me to go in the story with Haman, but yeah, he, 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 Haman, um, so he's, he's, you know, the king's good uh, buddy there, and he decides, he he talks to the king, which the king seems very persuadable. Yeah. He seems to be just a rubber stamp guy. Yeah, like, it's kind of funny, because yeah. usually in stories like these, like the king, yeah. I, you think of Pharaoh, or like yeah. he's like has a lot of weight, but right. yeah, Xerxes is like super wishy-washy, yeah. or just kind of like, okay, okay, you know, but like <laughs> yeah. for both sides, yeah, like yeah. not only for Haman, but for Mordecai later, right. okay. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah. So he, uh, he you know, sends the thing out that all the Jews in the kingdom from India to Ethiopia yeah. will be killed. And um, that's when the passage we read to begin with, you know, Mordecai challenges Esther. Esther yeah. responds by having dinner with the king and Haman mm-hmm. and dinner goes great. They ask her, well, what do you want? And he says, well, t- I'll tell you tomorrow. You guys come back yeah, yeah. tomorrow and I'll tell you. And and it just blows me away. So if you're Haman, you don't know anything bad's coming. You're thinking, how cool is this? Yeah. I can hang with, the, I get to hang with the king and the queen. Like I am I'm as elite, yeah. elite uh, a person as could be short of the king. And then he's going home and he sees Mordecai again, who doesn't give him the respect he deserves. And that ruins his whole night. And that's why I say yeah. there's some pettiness to him in the sense oh, of yeah. you're the man. And there's just this one guy does it for you. Like, yeah. and so then he builds a gallows for him, 75 feet high. Some say it's gallows, like hanging others. It's just a like stick a hole. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so either way, it's gnarly. Pain. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, and then, uh, you know, and that's at the rec- the suggestion of his wife and um, his friends. Yeah. And so then I, I love the next day. So the, they build that overnight, I guess. And, and um, the next day, you know, Haman, Haman's in the office early. And so he talks to the king and the king says, hey, I got to honor someone because the king had yeah. found out that Mordecai had not been honored. And Haman, because he's Haman, thinks, well, psh, I'm hanging out with you and the queen. Yeah. It must be me. I've yeah, been invited yeah. back to dinner. <laughs> yeah. 
like, and so he gives them this list of things that would be great. And then Mordecai, <laughs> or then Xerxes says, okay, do that for Mordecai. And just, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I just, I can imagine this his guy face. Is just like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, just uh, jaw hitting the floor. Are you got to be kidding me? And so he has to lead Mordecai. Yeah. This is what the king does for those he wants to honor. So, such a great reversal yeah. of fortune there. And I, I was, another resource I was skimming through says that, that that this is almost a comedy in mo- and I don't know if this is the case, but that in modern Purim celebrations that that this is the part where the kids laugh at the story, you know, because oh, uh, yeah, it's the come up and so, of it, yeah. you know, and it's just just beautiful poetic justice yeah, in all yeah. of it. So no, it is. It's so funny because when yeah, when I was reading this, you know, researching the story, I'm like, gosh, this is Shakespearean. But obviously, you know, we know yeah. that Shakespeare probably took from elements of this because right, right, he took yeah. from history because it's so perfectly just yeah, like the characters playing off each other, kind of almost over the top in a sense yeah. in some uh, yeah some points. Yeah. Um, something that I thought was fascinating was I, I've I, you know going back to the topic of suffering because it's a fascinating story, but. Mm-hmm. Um, like we said earlier, you know, I mean, obviously Esther was in a, a, a tough position, Mordecai, and then all the Jews. I mean, think of that, India to Ethiopia. I mean, that's that's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of kilometers or miles yeah. or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, whatever you measure yeah. with. You know, so I'm sure, you know, tens of thousands of people were oh, yeah. on the docket to die, you know. So there was – this was going on, and, and I feel like Haman is um, such a, a foil for Esther in terms of like um, – and so some of the research that I was doing, old Swindoll, his book that I'm going to um, uh, reference in the show notes, um, that um, Haman was probably of the Amalekite uh, lineage who had this kind of like a blood feud with right. uh, the Jews from hundreds of years yeah. past. you know, And so Haman was probably – Kind of like an orphan in a foreign land, Mm -hmm. like Esther was an orphan in a foreign Mm -hmm. land. Esther uh, uh, ascends to the position of queen, Haman to possibly second in command, you know, and and, and it's so interesting to see these two juxtapose, but Haman in his position, um, his kind of suffering or frustration or or whatever he's experiencing, he turns that to sin. Mm -hmm. He lets bitterness fall in and and it corrupts him and and he wants to literally commit genocide. Whereas Mordecai and Esther, Esther specifically uses her suffering as an opportunity to be brave, Mm -hmm. to do what's right, right, to to invoke fast and pray for me because this is a hard decision. And the passage that Justin read that, you know, when when Mordecai, you know, kind of shoots straight with her, you know, I mean, and and I also kind of touched on that, you know, in the midst of suffering, who do you want to resonate or who do you resonate with? You know, are you like Esther? You know, you got it's this is tough, but you got to be brave. Mm-hmm. Are you like Haman where maybe you sin, <laughs> you know, yeah. like if, yeah. if you're That's suffering from the bitterness. Yeah. But then Mordecai, if, if a friend is suffering or if you're engaging with someone who's going through pain, are you willing to shoot straight with them, you mm-hmm. know, and say, hey, yeah. you know, like you're not going to survive this genocide. Uh, perhaps, you know, I'm, I'm sure God will use other means, but. Yeah. This perhaps is your moment. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so it's just so interesting that we see different people handling suffering in different ways. And for those yeah. of you guys listening, just encourage you, you know, whatever's going on in your life, whatever is difficult, um, uh, reach out, connect with those around you, go to a church, c- yeah. call a pastor, Justin, email us, you know, like connect yeah. with us. Cause this is, it's serious stuff even for today. Um, so we just want to make that clear, but we can glean so much yeah. from the story. Yeah, well, and I think it's a brilliant. I mean, it's just a brilliant. You were talking about Shakespearean, and I'm. Yeah. I was telling you earlier as we were walking to the studio here, of how I taught this years ago in four different weeks, and I'm like, I don't know why I did that because the story is so tight. Yeah, like yeah. It, you know, you have to do a you know cliffhanger next, same time next week, same <laughs> yeah, bat channel, yeah. you do know, they, all that kind of stuff. Are they perishing or are they? You gotta come back, <laughs> right? Yeah, because it's just such a tight story. Yeah. Um, but, um, what was, what I was thinking is as I was looking at this, I saw community as an important piece of where is God in suffering. And so you have, after the edict, you have all of the Jewish people are grieving together. They're in sackcloth and ashes. And then after that, um, Esther says, okay, I'm going to go risk my life. If I perish, I perish, but you guys need to be praying. You know, yeah. it doesn't say praying, it says fasting, but that's what you do when you pray yeah, or when you, when you fast. So, so she's doing that. And then there's also, so there's, 
there's grieving together. There's praying together. There's also the point where Mordecai is like, hey, you need to step up. You know, yeah. there's a time just to cry with someone. And there's yeah. also a time where it's like, hey, you got to you got to make something happen here. And to to press people into what God would have for them um, to step up and, and maybe move through some of their fear or grief or whatever. And, and that's that's really something where we need the direction of the Holy spirit needs to be strong relationships where you know each other. You can't walk around to everyone just saying, Hey, having a bad day, suck it up. You know, like that's destructive, but there's times when someone needs to suck it up, you know, and, and you need to say, Hey, okay, let's go. It's time to, to shake it off and, and move forward in life, you know? And so, and that's only comes from the best of friends, I think, you know? (laughs) So, but it, it, it's, it's a, it's, those are all gifts in the right context. Totally. And I think that's super wise to, to say that that's, that's the Holy Spirit working in us, giving us that insight and giving us that know-how mm-hmm. and, and in the context of true friendship. Right. Um, I, I kind of looked a little bit at Romans, you know, kind of like in the application of the how to's, you know, Romans twelve fifteen rejoice with those who rejoice mourn with those who mourn and just like Justin is saying that's 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 such a a small verse and you kind of like oh yeah just you know live life with people and it's mm-hmm. like well no it's it's deeper than that just like Justin yeah. is saying you know like listen to the Holy Spirit be sensitive know what your community is going through and listen to God to help you to help them you know yeah. because oftentimes I mean especially it's it's kind of interesting you know giving. <laughs> the suffering, you know, sermon, especially here, 21st century, Western, s- South, uh, Southern California, America, we don't suffer a lot. I mean, at least people in my context, in my neighborhood. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely, you know, I see homeless folks, definitely they're suffering their mental health, you know, I mean, the food, you know, I mean, yeah. there's definitely suffering that happens. But I think a lot of us, if we're able to listen to this podcast, you know, on our iPhone, you know, driving in our car, you know, I mean, uh, you know, compared to people throughout history, people today in other countries, I mean, sometimes it's hard to really kind of what does suffering mean? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think, too, there's um, there's some that are obvious sufferings. And there's other times where it's more internal emotional stuff. That's kind of what I started with. You know, when yeah. you think of suffering, you think yeah. of people who are having to deal with fires or Ukrainians who are displaced. Totally, yeah. Or anyone who's displaced. And then you think of the different things you deal with where it's the insecurities that you can't seem to shake or the relationships that are going bad and those how yeah. those mess with us internally and and then physical suffering as well with health and whatnot. But yeah. um, we all have however we're processing that we all suffer and there's certainly degrees on an objective level, but we all feel it regardless. And yeah. some of us, you know, we, there's no way we're as tough as people a hundred years ago. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, but it, it is what it is. And, and so in that we still, you know, I can, I, I have not suffered significantly in my life and I still get super bummed sometimes. And I, and I feel like I'm suffering. And yeah. in that, I can if if I don't watch myself, I can get I can spiral yeah, totally. and say, God, where are you in this? And it's it's a hangnail in in a lot of ways, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and yet it's it's real enough that it's got yeah, me twisted. Th- and yeah. and uh, it, and I think it's important that we, hey, we can still keep going to God in this and yeah. and working through it. So yeah, yeah but. Well, Justin, uh, and those of you listening, we got to wrap it up here pretty quick. Uh, any closing thoughts? And Justin, can you tell us? I mean make clear how the story ends <laughs> because we kind of let speaking of cliffhangers yeah we didn't really get through the entire yeah. story as yeah well as well in yeah i mean the story is I mean, it's such a great story because it, it it ends with well no you think it ends with esther um calling them out and saying uh she tells the king hey i'm about to die yeah he's like well who did that and i'm thinking you signed it bro but yeah. regardless <laughs> yeah, so yeah. she she's smart enough to say it's this wicked haman and so haman is hung on the gallows yeah. that uh, mordecai he set up for mordecai but what's interesting is then then there's a twist after that like it could wrap up after chapter seven but it doesn't yeah it goes on for another yeah three chapters yeah because yeah. there's this edict and he's like oh well i can't rescind it and so yeah. um so that was like oh that's that's really interesting so then they just made a counter edict of like well 
we encourage all the Jewish people to defend themselves. And yeah. so if anyone came against him, they got, they it's got smoked. To, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. Which again, um, God working in like, right. Yeah. Because yeah. they basically routed in like modern street gang warfare. You know, it's, it yeah. wasn't like a battlefield. It was like, you know, yeah. yeah but yeah. God was still yeah. in the midst of that. Yeah. yeah. So it, it, it was, it's just a fantastic, fantastically tight little story and, and yeah. good stuff of, you know, if you look closely enough, you see God around you yeah. see him working. So, well, that's perfect. I think that's, yeah, that's the best way that we can wrap this up. So thank you, Justin, for yeah, having pleasure. a conversation. Yeah. Thanks, you guys, for listening. Uh, we always love it when you join our Revive podcast. Please share this episode with a friend, especially if they're going through something. Um, just like we're talking about, there's a lot of different forms of suffering, a lot of different things going on in this world today. So we don't want to minimize that at all. So definitely engage with this conversation with your friends. If this podcast is helpful, use it. Also, some of the resources that we discussed, we're going to post on our website. You can find that at neighborhoodchurch.com slash revive. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, on YouTube. Like I said, check out Justin's sermon at Neighborhood Church of Cyprus, or you can check out the Los Alamitos community at Neighborhood Church of Los Alamitos on YouTube. Also, we'd love to hear from you guys. Please email us any comments or questions, and you could do that at connect at neighborhoodchurch.com. That's C-O-N-N-E-C-T at neighborhoodchurch.com. Well, until next time, we hope to see you guys then, and we pray that God revives your soul.